Hey guys, Ms. Tucker here. Uh, today we're looking at the third class of macromolecules and we're examining proteins, but instead of just looking at amino acids and amino acid structure, we're actually gonna get into the overall structure of a protein. So basically, um, the way to remember what proteins look like um, are that we've, there are four different levels. One, two, three, four. Four different levels of protein structure. And the first level, is called uh, the primary structure of a protein. And a primary structure of a protein um, is very simple. It is uh, the order of amino acids. Order of amino acids. And that just means that the information that is in your DNA tells um, all of these different molecules that we'll get into way later in the year, um, which order these amino acids go in. It actually is pretty important, and we're, actually, uh, we're gonna see that um, in class if you haven't seen it already. So the order of the amino acids is primary structure, and primary, of course, means first. So that's the very most basic level of structure when we're looking at proteins. The second thing, uh, second level, it's, it's a tricky name, is secondary structure. And secondary structure is the second level of protein structure. And that's when we get our first um, layer of interactions, our first kind of, uh, I guess layer is a good word, just the first of the beginnings of interactions between the side chains on the individual amino acids. So they're um and they're local so by local i mean if you look at these two they're, they're only you know four amino acids apart these guys are only six amino acids apart so you've got that initial bonding that first phase of interaction um, and we're going to see a couple of different kinds of interactions here that are going to start to form these the first is of course um, the one that's illustrated and those are hydrogen bonds um, and you guys know that hydrogen bonds are um, caused by um, the partially negative um, oxygens and nitrogens interacting with the partially positive hydrogens on other points. That's gonna be the first level. We're also gonna have um, some hydrophobic groupings, and these are gonna apply um, at secondary structure and at the next structure. So we're gonna have some hydrophobic interactions. Remember, hydrophobic means that they're all gonna, um, they're, they're nonpolar molecules, and since you know most of your body is uh, made up of water, they're all kind of kind of clustered together. And we'll look at that a little bit more when we look at um, we look at our uh, large protein structure in class. So the secondary structure is just kind of the first phase of side chain, or the R group as we looked at um, in class. Uh, the first phase of side chain interaction. So that's the initial, first phase of the initial uh, of phase of side chain interaction. And that's a, a pretty easy way to remember it. And you know, secondary structure, H bonding to side group. So that's local. So we're also gonna say local because the amino acids that are interacting are very close together. So that's kind of um, secondary structure in a nutshell. Uh, the next one that we're going to look at is called tertiary structure. And for those of you that are not Latin students, tertiary refers to the third level of structure. So this is very similar to the second, um, but we are going to be looking at um, the hydrogen bonds that are taking place far away on the chain. So let's look at um, this guy right here. So you'll notice that this amino acid is at one end of the polypeptide chain, and it's actually interacting with, um, or high, form, you know, uh, forming some sort of uh, chemical interaction between an amino acid that's almost at the other end of the chain. So this is um, H bonds between amino acids that are nearby and distant. So you're getting um, a larger actual three-dimensional structure, um, and this is a very simple uh, form of what amino acid look like, it's going to make a lot more sense when we build them in class because we're going to be able to see all of the different atoms and the nitrogens and the hydrogens and the oxygens, um, all of those things interacting and starting to clump together in an actual shape, um, which proteins are known for. Let's move on. The last one. Um, again, Latin students, you may know um, that uh, quaternary 
uh, means four. Whoops, that's a silly looking four. The fourth level of structure um, is called the quaternary structure. And not all proteins actually get to this level of structure. Quaternary structure is referring to when molecules actually have multiple polypeptide chains linked together. Now, again, we're zoomed out a little bit, but you can see as I circle all these individual chains that there, this uh, particular protein is actually made up of three different polypeptide chains, all come uh, linked together and bonded in some way. So some proteins stop at tertiary structure, and some proteins actually link together with other chains and make big, massive, complex protein structures. Those are the four levels of protein structure in a nutshell. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Again, it's a little bit difficult to uh, conceptualize in a two-dimensional way. So um, in class, we will build some of these molecules. You should already have your amino acid structure memorized or be working on it at least. And we'll actually build those and link all of those things together and then start to fold them in to see what kinds of things or what kinds of structures we're talking about. Um, here's an example of a quaternary protein. And I'm gonna just kind of circle. There's, th looks like there are three different this little model. So here's one protein chain. And then there's one kind of back here, kind of this dark orange colored one. It might actually help to use a different color. Let's do it in green. There's a second protein chain. And then here is the third protein chain. So you've actually got in a hemoglobin molecule three individual polypeptides that all form the, a protein at the quaternary level or the fourth level. Fourth equals quaternary. And so hemoglobin is an example of a protein that has quaternary level structure. Um, and there's a little bit of information about hemoglobin. Um, hemoglobin is a transport protein, which we're going to get into the uses um, and functions of proteins tomorrow. But um, hemoglobin is a transport protein, and it's actually found on the surface of your red blood cells, and it carries oxygen. So you can see this oxygen is binding to these little, um, what we call hemes. Don't worry about that. But um, this oxygen's binding here, and that's how your blood carries oxygen um, all around your body for all the cells because our cells need oxygen. And the whys of that, we'll get into later. So just an example, um, you'll see hemoglobin a, um, a little bit later. Um, so you don't have to worry about remembering that right at the second. Uh, things to remember, as always, uh, you need to uh, be aware of the four levels of protein structure and what they are. Um, you need to know about some of those interactions that hold that protein together in that three-dimensional shape, um, like the hydrogen bonding or hydrogen bonds and uh, hydrophobic interactions. Um, you need to remember that some proteins don't have all four levels. Some proteins just stop at or just chains of single uh, polypeptides, and um, they don't actually combine with other ones. Um, interesting things. Uh, Proteins vary from the tens of amino acids in length, so some are 20, 25 amino acids long, and some of them are thousands long. The longest, um, the last time I looked, the longest that they found was 26,000 amino acids long, so that's a pretty big protein. Um, and another thing that I don't think I mentioned yet is that there are over 10,000 proteins in your body. So basically, your body is just a giant organi organized protein structure. And there's so many proteins that we're going to get into uh, what some of those are when we look at um, cl or in class tomorrow with the class that you have after this video. Um, 